from the southern tip of Africa comes a voice of revival. A voice revealing God's truths and desires for our lives. A voice equipping saints with the practical application of God's Word. We've got to have a firm foundation and that's the Word of God. So have your Bibles, notepads and pens ready as we get into more practical application from God's Word. Now all that's required is for us to have an absolute trust in this Word. Let's join Alan Bagg for more wisdom for life. Hello dear friend, welcome back to Wisdom for Life. This is Alan Bagg and we are getting together having a look at a great subject this week. What is the full potential that God has placed in you and how do we get it out? How do we manifest and see everything God created you to be come to pass? I'm sure you'd like to see that inside of you, you know there's something greater than what you've seen so far. I know that's true in my life. I, I've caught a glimpse of what God has called me to, and, you know, and I'll be honest, it, it, it's a little unnerving. I mean, God, you really, is that what you're wanting me to do? But here's the thing. I don't have to try and do it in my own ability. God placed that within me. You know, I spoke about the glory showing up in a fish yesterday. Remember that, that when a fish swims, you're seeing the glory of God manifesting. When a bird flies, you're seeing the glory of God in action. Now, listen, when a bird flies, that bird doesn't have to struggle and strain. It doesn't wake up every morning to get all nervous, think, oh, oh my, 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 I've got to fly today. Oh, I hope I can do it. I, I did, I know I flew yesterday, but I don't know if I can still do it today. I, I'm so unworthy, really. I don't know if I'm, desi you know, I know I did fly yesterday, but I, I want to be humble about this. I think I won't fly today because, uh, you know, I don't want to look like a show-off or anything. No, that bird gets up and fluffs its wings every morning and off it goes. It just flies and takes off. Why? Because it's been designed to fly. Same with a fish. It doesn't have to stress and strain on how to swim. It doesn't have to worry about trying to breathe underwater. It's designed to do that. That's the glory of God. What have you been designed for? There's greatness in you. There is potential in you. And we want to see it all come to pass. And, and, that, and that's where I think the body of Christ has really struggled over so many centuries. God said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Hosea 4 verse 6. And the only reason we struggle and battle in life is because we are a fish trying to fly. Or a bird trying to swim. No. If we find out what God created us for, what He designed us to be, man, there's no holding us back. And so that's what we're doing this week. Remember we looked at Isaiah 60, Arise, shine, your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. In other words, it's already, yeah, we're not waiting on the glory of God. I mean, all these years we've been waiting for God. God says, I've been waiting for you. I've put greatness in you. I've put my glory in you. And he says here that the Gentiles will see it in verse 3. Well, what is that glory? Well, we know from verse 19 that God is our glory. So it's the presence of God in our lives. But there's more to it than that. It's not just knowing God's here. There's a manifestation that we're going to see take place. Because the Bible tells us that the heavens declare the glory of God in Psalm chapter 19. And that glory is seen all over. In Isaiah 6, 3, the whole earth is full of that glory. And remember, yeah, in Isaiah 60 verse 3, the Gentiles will see it. Now, yesterday we found out that the word glory is the Hebrew word kabod. Now, kabod talks about a heavy weight, an imposing weight, copiousness, an abundance of glory, great quantity, multitude, wealth, reputation, and splendor. And, and it's that, that tremendous weightiness of the word that we see in God. Obviously, God is one that walks around with glory and anointing and with favor. And He has the abundance and, and, and the full provision. He, he is, that's who God is. But the good news is, that's what He put in you. Uh, taking this word glory further, let's go and have a look at Psalm chapter 8. Psalm chapter 8. Now, this is a very interesting portion of Scripture because we must ask ourselves, why did God create man? Why were you put on this earth? Well, let's have a look at Psalm chapter 8. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. 
heavens is plural because we know that there is more than one heaven. Paul said that he knows a man whether in the body or out the body, he doesn't know, but he was caught up to the third heaven. So the first heaven is this atmosphere that's around us. The second heaven would be the stars and the sun, you know, outer space. And then the third heaven would be the place that we would call heaven, the dominion where God is, the actual location where God's throne room is. And so that's the three that we know about. And he says here, you set your glory above the heavens. In other words, God's glory ro r rules and reigns over all three of those various realms. And then verse 2, out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained praise. Now, I know some Bibles have the word strength there. But if you go look at Matthew 21 verse 16, Jesus quoted that as the word praise. So you can just take your pen and write praise above strength there. It says, out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained praise because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. So what was praise created for? Praise was created by God to silence the enemies. Can you see from that, you were not created in order to praise God. That's an important thing to know because... So many people, if you ask them, why did God create us? Well, to worship Him. To me, that speaks of arrogance because the Bible says in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that, that love does not seek its own. And 1 John 4, 16, God is love. So God doesn't need anything for Himself. Uh, God didn't create man just to worship Him. Well, the angels were already worshiping Him. Why did He have to create more things to worship Him. No, God's not somebody that's always looking for His own thing. God is a great God of giving. He's a God of love. He's a God of compassion. So everything that God does is for His creation. Everything He does is for you. And so He says here, uh, you've ordained praise because of the enemy. In other words, Satan tried to get in and destroy the relationship between God and man. And he managed to do that. When Adam fell in that great high treason that he committed in, in, in bowing to a fallen creature, that, that completely severed off all relationships with God. And God wanted to get back to man. So what he did is he ordained. He said, right, I will give man the right to praise me. And if he praises me, I will establish in my word that I am enthroned on the praises of Israel. In other words, when man praises, I have a rightful entry into the earth. And God created praise. And when you lift His name up and you say, Father, I praise you. I worship you and I adore you. You're great and magnificent. What that does, God says, now I have legal entry into that earth. And God enters in through your heart and shows up in the earth through the praises of man. Isn't that powerful? Verse 3, when I consider your he heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? He says, you know, when you think about man, what is it that you think about him? Why would you even consider man? Verse 5, you've made him a little lower than God and you've crowned him with glory and honor. Now again, some translations have the word angels there. But if you've got a good Bible, you notice it has a little number there or a letter or an asterisk. You see that? Now that means there's a reference in your margin. So go across to your margin and you look up that number and you'll find there it's the word Elohim. Now Elohim is again a Hebrew word. And again, you know, if you, if you study it out, you'll find out that it's a word that is plural. It's actually like in, in English, if you said dog, it means singular, and then dogs, you put an S on the end, that S makes a plural. Well, Elohim is a plural word. And that's the same word used in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, when God said, it's when Elohim said, let us make man in our image. That us is talking about a, uh, many people. It, it's God the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now we know God is one, but He's not one individual person. He is one as in unity. 
He's one in purpose, one in vision. In other words, God, Jesus said, when, he, when Philip said, show us the Father, Jesus said, how long must I be with you? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus said, I don't say anything unless my Father tells me, and it's the Holy Spirit that speaks it to me. He doesn't speak on his own authority, but he speaks on the authority of the Father. So when it doesn't matter who you speak to, the Father or Jesus or the Holy Spirit, you're always going to hear the same opinion. They are so united as one. But we understand that there are three different people there, the Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And the three together, God said, let us make man in our image. That word is the word Elohim. That's the word written here. God made us a little lower than Elohim, a little lower than himself. Now we know this to be true because the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 1 that the angels have been sent forth as ministering spirits for the heirs of salvation, not to minister to, but to minister for us. They literally, the angels are servants to man. God has sent the angels that whenever man speaks, the word says in, in Psalms that the angels hearken to the voice of God's word. You are that voice. So when you speak, angels go into action. In fact, the Bible tells us that we will judge angels. That's interesting. God judges man, man judges angels. So you can see the hierarchy there. God created man just a little lower than himself. And then notice it says, you have crowned him with glory and honor. He placed that glory on you. That crown of glory and honor he created in man. Now, what is that crown? Why did God create man? That's a good question. Now, we've already found out God didn't create us for the sole purpose of worshiping Him. We understand that praise is because of the enemy. that silences Satan, gives God the rightful place and entry into the earth. And so why did God create man? Well, let's allow the Bible to answer us. Have a look at verse 6. You have made man to have dominion over the works of your hands. You've put, him, you've put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name. How excellent is your name in all the earth. Now notice in verse 6, God created man to have dominion over his work. In other words, God in all his glory created creation, created the universe, all the suns, the stars, the moons, all the planets. And then on one of those planets, he put man. And when he created man, he put him in that earth and he gave man full authority over all his creation. In other words, God created the earth. He created all of creation. He created everything that he's ever created. And he created it with you in mind. Oh, hallelujah. Everything you see that God has created, he created because he wanted to birth a family God and sons. And as he birthed a son, he said to that son, Now that I've created this earth, it's yours. Now you take authority. God's in all his love and all his glory was dispatching that. He was giving it to man. And that was God's ultimate crowning glory was mankind. Let's go and have a look at that in Genesis chapter 1. I want you to see this and just get a hold of what has really happened here who you are and why we were created, why we're on this earth. Have a look here at Genesis chapter 1. Remember verse 26, I quoted, Then Elohim said, God said, Let us make man in our image, in our image, according to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Now listen to what he says here. That man that he created, he created in his own image. The angels aren't created in the image of God. You can go and study it out. When you see the angels and the descriptions of them, they are spirit beings, but they are not God-like creatures. Whereas here, God says, we're going to create man according to our likeness. And just the same way we do, let them have dominion. And you see in verse 27, So God created man in His own image. In the image of God He created him. Male and female He created them. 
Now listen. Then God blessed them. God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Now, what we're seeing here, he's repeating what he said in verse 26. Now, remember, in verse 26, man wasn't there yet. God was still discussing it with himself. So, as they were discussing together, he said, we need to make man in our image. And according to our likeness, the same way we do, let them have dominion over everything. So, when God created man, he now places that authority in him. But you notice how God creates? You see in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In verse 2, the earth was without form and void. The darkness was on the face of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light and there was light. Now the Hebrew there literally reads this way. God said, light be, light was. In other words, the fact that God said, light be, light manifested. So when God created man, what he did, the Bible tells us elsewhere that he created, he pulled from the earth, he used the earth itself, the dust of the earth, and he formed a body using the same elements as the earth. And he formed this body, but this body was limp. There was no life in it. Then the Bible says he breathed on that man. The man became a living soul. The original Hebrew literally says a speaking spirit. God created you as a speaking spirit. And as he did that, as man came to life, that body, man, he breathed, God breathed his own life into that body. The life of God awakened in that body. And as he awakened, his eyes opened. As his eyes opened, he was looking straight into the face of God. And then as he looked into the face of God, all of a sudden his ears could hear. And God realized this. The first words God ever speaks, the first words this man ever hears is, Be fruitful, multiply. Fill the earth, subdue it, and take dominion. Now, I want you to get a hold of what he just said here because when God created the earth, the Bible tells us he put in it a garden. That garden he called Eden. Now, that was only a small piece of real estate. He didn't do it to the whole planet. Only a small place he put in this earth. He called it Eden, and the word Eden means perfection. So God made that place perfect. And then he put man in it. And he said to man, Now, take what I've done here and fill the earth. He wasn't just saying have babies. Of course, that's included in it. We need to, they needed to populate the earth. But he said, Now, take what I've put here in the earth. Be fruitful with it. Multiply it and fill it. In other words, the same way I created Eden, I want you to take that and spread it through the planet. And while you're doing that, subdue the earth and take dominion over it. God created man to take dominion over this creation. Now we understand why we were created. Now when we talk about glory, that glory is the manifestation of that potential. God crowned them. When God said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it and take dominion, that is the crowning glory. He released the glory by speaking that word. That's the blessing, the blessing. As that blessing was released, that blessing filled Adam and gave him the power and the ability. Remember, light be, light was. God says, fruitful be, multiply be, fill the earth be, subdue it be, take dominion. In other words, he's saying be these things. The moment he said it, that manifested in Adam the potential and the ability to rule and reign on this earth the same way God did. That's exactly what he placed in Adam. That glory is what showed up and manifested. Now that glory is in you. And now everything in the earth has a glory. I mean, you look at 1 Corinthians 15 verse 40. There are celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. Now celestial bodies are those things that you see out there in space. Terrestrial bodies talks about things here on the earth. It says, but the glory of the celestial is one. The glory of the terrestrial is another. Now listen, there is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. 
One star differs from another star in glory. So they're both stars, but they got different glories. In other words, different potential, different reasons for existing. Now you look the same as another man or woman. I'm not talking about your individual looks, but man, different men and women all look similar. But each one has been created with its own glory. There is a potential in you that's different to the potential in me. There's a glory in you that's a different glory to somebody else. That glory is what we want to see manifesting. So that glory, as we've seen here, is the crown of glory, the ability to be fruitful, to multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and take dominion. So the glory of a bird is to fly. And the glory of a fish is to swim. What is your glory? You have been created in the image of God. The glory of man is is to be just like God in order to take dominion over this earth. No matter what the enemy try to throw at you, sickness, disease, poverty, lack, the curse, anything that's tried to fight you and come against you, I want you to know today that you have within you a God-ordained glory to rise up against that sin, rise up against you as it manifests you take authority and dominion and you can run satan out of your house that's what adam should have done he was crowned with that glory he had full dominion should have said to the devil get out of my garden i have an instruction from god and satan would have had to flee according to james the word says that when you submit to god and resist the devil he will flee from you now that same authority and dominion is in you today satan tried to take your garden you stand up and say, no, get out of my garden. You have no right, no place here in the name of Jesus. Now, we want to see that glory begin to manifest. We're going to carry on studying that and find out how to do that in your life. But until then, that will happen tomorrow. I first want to pray with you and pray a blessing into that home. So why don't you just hold on a moment there. After this, we're going to do that. People that understand the kingdom of God, understand the purposes of God, God has prepared this year. If you've been listening, God has positioned you, He's equipped you, He's prepared you, He's enabled you, He's empowered you, and it's for a purpose. That purpose is about to manifest. This conference is probably the, the highlight of the year. It's just, it's just exciting to be here. It's awesome to be here. Oh, it's been awesome. I've been having a good time. The Word. The Word works for me. You can feel the Holy Spirit from the moment you come in. Very, very excited, very blessed, very anointed. The possibilities are going to show up. The opportunities are going to show up. But only those that are equipped and positioned will be able to access them, will be able to penetrate them, will be able to tap into them. What the Lord is saying is prepare. prepare. When I go out here, I will, I will be able to share some of this that I've experienced here, take it back to my home. It's a whole life change. The anointing and the grace is opening up for you unlimited possibilities. series, Pastor Alan Beck spends close to six hours uncovering what the crown of glory is. He helps reveal what the crown of glory means to us as believers, as well as practical principles that you need in order to activate the crown of glory in your life. This series is an in-depth study, revealing the immense power and authority God has given us as believers. This series will renew your mind and will build your faith so you too can walk confidently in the power and authority Jesus died to give us. Get hold of your series on CD or DVD. Walk in the dominion and authority God has given you. Contact us by calling our number or writing to us here at Allen Bag Ministries. Receiving the crown of glory. Now, I want to see you step into the fullness of the glory that God has placed in your life. 
Man was crowned with glory. Man lost it. Jesus got it back. Now it's time for you to step up and enjoy the fullness of what that glory is. Now, how do you receive it? What exactly is the crown? How does it work in your life? It's for now. It's not for one day in heaven. It's available now. It's in you. It's on you. What is it? When you discover what it is and how to put it into action, your life will never be the same again. Get it today. It's going to transform your life forever. Now, I want to pray with you. I know that you've been challenged in many different things in life and uh, things may be going wrong right now. You may be hurting. But I want you to know that we are here to stand in agreement with you always to pray life-changing prayers, prayers of faith. Because when I pray, I believe I receive what I pray for. It happens. So I want to speak that blessing into your life right now. Let's pray together. Father, I pray for my dear friend. I pray for that person that is is so faithful in following your word. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless them in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for your grace that is alive in that home. I thank you for your glory that is manifesting in their lives. And Lord, that you would reveal the fullness of your glory in a way that is so obvious to those that are around. And so I call that family blessed, delivered from sickness and disease, Poverty has been eliminated. And Father, that they would grow strong in your faith. And I thank you for this, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, my dear friend. Now listen, I'd love to hear your testimonies. Thank you so much for writing. I really appreciate the contact that you make with us. And also for all those that so generously give. We, we are blessed. And it's because of your faithfulness that we're able to continue with this ministry. And as a result, there's a harvest coming to you. We're going to carry on studying this tomorrow now. We're having a look at what it means to manifest your full potential. Bring your Bible, notepad, and pen. And we'll carry on with it and just dig deep into God's Word. Until then, this is Alan Bagg reminding you that Jesus is Lord. And remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. Alan Bag Ministries has made this week's Wisdom for Life programs available on CD and DVD. To order this week's programs, contact us at this number or these addresses and we'll send it to you as soon as we can. 